All right, so I don't have it on the board, but you need to, as we, again, as always, if we start a new chapter, uh, the terms uh, for chapter six are going to be due next Wednesday. All right, due next Wednesday will be the terms for chapter six. Uh, not a lot of them, uh, but they'll be due next Wednesday, uh, as well as your notebook. Your notebook will be due next Wednesday as well uh, for the third quarter. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, again, make sure you have your third quarter divider page. Uh, make sure you try to have your papers inside the notebook uh, chronologically uh, in each section. So try, try not to put something you, from today back in the beginning where uh, it's kind of out of order. Uh, I don't stress a whole lot on that, but uh, it's, it's usually nice for me just to flip through that everything will be right there in order. Uh, so uh, try to do that if you can. Uh, for for that uh, for your notebook. All right, chapter six deals with energy, and energy has a lot to do with motion, uh, because otherwise we won't be able to move if we can't if we don't have energy. Uh, so we want to look at energy a little bit here today. Uh, energy, SI unit for energy is the joule, J O U L E. Joule is the unit for energy. What is energy? An abbreviation for energy, or for a joule, is J, capital J. What is energy? Energy is the ability do work. Energy is the ability to do work, is the jewel. Oh, I'm sorry, is energy. The jewel is the unit for energy. The actual, en actual units for energy is a kilogram times meter squared over second squared. You look at that and say, oh, that looks familiar. Very similar to the units for a Newton force. The only difference is that you have an extra meter there. There's an extra meter. You can write that down. You can't write this down because it's not a formula. Card is only for formulas, not for expressions or anything like that. No, it's kilograms times. Right. You can't, that's not a formula, so that's, that's just a unit. So you, can, you need to memor, memorize that. Just like for a Newton, there's a kilogram times meters over second squared. You need to memorize that. Uh, same thing here. Uh, but there are formulas in this book that you will have to uh, write down. All right? So, ability to do work. Makes sense that energy and work are interchangeable. They gotta kind of go back and forth. We have no energy. We can't do work. If we're doing work, then we have energy. Now work, in respects to energy, maybe is a little bit different than what you think of, but it's sort of, it's sort of the same uh, when we're dealing with energy. Uh, but work and energy are kind of going hand in hand. Uh, and we'll talk more about work a little bit later uh, when we talk about uh, work and sp specifically work. But energy is the ability to do work. There are two main types of energy. That deal with mechanics. We're going to talk about a lot of energy today. Uh, a lot of different types of energy in this chapter. But there are two main types of energy that deal with mechanics that we want to look at. We have potential energy, and we have kinetic energy. All 
Potential energy. Energy of position or energy of condition. Two different types of energy definitions. I'm going to give you a third one. Energy of storage. Energy of position is what we're going to really look at energy of position. Take for instance, a rock on top of the cliff compared to a rock on the bottom of the cliff. What, which rock has the more potential to show energy? Oh. It is compared to its position. Energy of position. All right? Energy of condition. A brand new car compared to a 100 year old car that's been sitting around doing nothing for 100 years. What has the more potential of or what, what, yeah, what has more potential of showing energy? The new one. Energy of condition. The condition of the matter that we're talking about. Energy in storage. All right, so we've looked at this rock on top, of the, on top of the cliff. It had a lot of energy stored in it, wanting to be shown, wanting to be used, because it's teetering on the edge of that cliff. Whereas the rock down here, there's not a whole lot of energy there that can be used because it has nowhere to go, would be energy in storage. So they kind of all relate to each other, all right? But depending on what we're talking about, it would depend on what we are, definition that we're using. The one right now, what we'd be using most often, it would be energy of position. Where is it located? would determine how much potential energy it has. And potential is exactly what it says, potential. Can you measure yeah. energy? What's that? Can you measure energy? Yes, you can measure energy. And again, we would me be measuring energy in joules. It would be the units that we would measure in. And just like potential, you know, your parents say you have so much potential that you're not using, right? You have it in you, but you're not showing it, right? So that's where you get potential from, a potential energy. Kinetic energy, energy in motion, energy of motion. Well, potential energy depends on position. And it, kinetic energy depends on motion. Mass and velocity. Or we could say mass and speed, but mass and velocity. So total energy an object has would equal the potential energy object has plus the kinetic energy an object has. And we go back to that old saying, conservation of energy. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. 
Change it is neither created nor destroyed. All right, if I take this book from this table and put the book up here, does it have more energy or less energy than it had? More. More. But did I create that energy? Not necessarily. Now, I inputted energy by me actually using my energy to be able to lift it up. So that's where that extra energy came from. Now, if I drop it, I have potential energy right now, correct? Mm -hmm. As I drop it, it starts to move. What happens to the potential energy? Okay, what else happens to the potential energy? It's using it. It's using it, but you say it goes down. down because its position is going down. But what happens to its kinetic energy? It goes up because its velocity is increasing as it falls down but the energy is always the same. The total energy I have up here is the same as the total energy I have here, which is the same as the total energy I have here. Okay? Even though I stopped. Now, I used to do it with a little bit less, lower, lesser book. So let me do it with this book here. All right? So here's my book. I drop it. Okay? How much energy do I have? But how much does it have now? None. None. If energy is neither created nor destroyed, where'd it go? Because now it has no kinetic energy because it's not moving. It has no potential energy. It's, we use this room as my system because it has no place to go. So really, the total energy is zero. So where did all the energy go when I had a lot of energy up here? Is there negative kinetic energy? Mm, no, not negative kinetic energy. Which is going to come up to what we're going to be talking about next week or tomorrow. All right, this is just two types of energy. There's many different types of energy. And we're going to be talking tomorrow about the different forms of energy that we could be using or that we have in our world. All right? If you had your feet on the ground and the book hit the ground, did you feel it on your feet at all? You might have been able to feel a little bit. You should have felt a little vibration in the, in the, in the, uh, in the floor. Did we hear it? Yes. If I had a thermometer that was on the floor at where it hit, I probably would see a little bit change in temperature as well. So that energy was neither created nor destroyed. It wasn't destroyed, but it would just merely transform into another form of energy. Sound. That, that sound eventually went into our ears and absorbed into the walls. Vibration, which that vibration ended up dissipating out. Right? Uh, the temperature eventually go, went back to its normal temperature because it goes back to equilibrium. Uh, so there's many different forms that the energy could go into. But this is an important concept that we're going to be talking about when we deal with kinetic and potential energy, mechanical energy. Right? As this rock falls, potential energy increases or decreases decreases, kinetic energy increases, total energy stays the same. So it's always zero? No, not always zero. Because up here, up here, what's zero? If it's sitting on top, what's zero? Kinetic energy. But we have a lot of potential energy. As just before we hit the ground, right, we have a lot of kinetic energy, but very little potential. So let's say the potential energy up here was 500 joules. What is the kinetic energy down here? 500 joules. 
two. What's the kinetic energy up here? Zero. Zero joules. What's the potential energy down here? Zero. The energy stays the same, the total energy. Which when we get to some of our formulas that we're going to be talking about, that's going to help us out. A little bit of that concept. All right, so that's our unit for energy is joule. Energy is the, the ability to do work. There's two types of energy that we talked about so far, potential and kinetic, that deals with kinematics and mechanics that we're going to do. That's why, it, why it's going to be called mechanical energy, because uh, it deals with mechanics. Uh, get the three different definitions, the two different definitions for kinetic. Uh, we talked about total energy, how that potential and kinetic energy relates. Uh, they always add up to equal total energy. All right, and we see some examples here. And we'll look at this example a little bit more a little bit later. Okay?